So before I start, can anyone tell me like what is the one thing that we cannot live without on a daily basis besides your iPhone? Water. Air. Yeah. Okay, I hear air. Air is a good answer. Um, actually, I'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, I think I also heard water. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. So um, water is covering a very large area on the planet Earth that we're living in. However, most of the water here are salt water, and fresh water like um, the rivers, the streams, and the pond only make up less than 1% on the Earth's surface. However, it is supporting about 10% of the Earth biodiversity, which includes us human. Um, does anyone know what invertebrates are? So they are animals without backbones, um, like insects, snails, and worms. So if we look at the invertebrate diversity um, in freshwater stream in North America, there is one class of animals that is standing out, which is insects. So they account for about two-thirds of the um, diversity um, in freshwater in North America. And there is one particular insect that we are interested about, which is mayflies. So um, mayflies can only be found where the water is clean. So they are indicators of the freshwater system. On the left figure here is a mayfly larvae. They are aquatic insects, which means they live in the water. And they do not leave water until they are ready to become adults. So like kids um, leaving home off to college. Uh, unfortunately, they only get to live a couple days once they become adults. So, you may have questions like where and when can these mayflies be found? Um, how big can they grow? Um, how long does it take for them to become adults? And what is the metabolism like? Now, the answer to all of these questions will highly depend on one thing, which is temperature. So temperature determines where these insects can be found and how well they will be performing. There are a lot of things that can change um, water temperature, which includes the sun and shades from trees. Um, a heavy rainstorm can change water temperature. Power plants that are releasing hot water can also change water temperature. And last but not least, global warming. There is a rule called the temperature size rule, which is basically saying that in cooler temperatures, insects can grow up, become bigger. They produce more eggs, and they spend more time to become adults. When temperature goes up um, warmer, the insects will become smaller. They spend little, less time to become adults, and they produce less eggs. Now, if temperature continues to go up all the way to um, the thermal limits, they cannot survive anymore, and then um, species will disappear. Now, we do not know the mayfly that we're studying, whether or not it is following the temperature size rule. So what we did was we reared them at different temperatures, um, ranging from 14 to 28 degrees at two degree interval, and um, from hatching to they become adults. And we look at some of the life history traits. And what we found was that their survival rates were pretty consistent throughout different temperatures, except when it gets warmer and at only two degree difference their survival rate will drop from 80 to less than 20% left. And when it goes even higher at 30 degrees, none of the mayfly larvae were able to become adults. So this is telling us that the ecological thermal limits here for this mayfly is less than 30 degrees. Now, how big can these mayflies grow? It also depends on the temperature. At 14 degrees, they can weigh about 1.8 milligrams and their mass would drop when temperature increases. So when it gets to 28, they only weigh about one third left, so um, 0 0.7 milligrams. How many eggs can they make? They also make more eggs when it's colder. So at 14 degrees, they can make up to 1,600 eggs. And this also decreases when temperature increase. At 28 degrees, they only make about 300 eggs. They also need more time to become adults when it's cooler. At 14 degrees, they take a little bit more, about two months, to become adults. Whereas when temperature is around 28, they only need three weeks. 
So these data here are telling us that yes, this mayfly is following the temperature size rule. However, it doesn't tell us what is restricting, what is the mechanism that is restricting these mayflies' body size. There is one hypothesis out there called the oxygen limitation hypothesis, which is basically saying that when the temperature is cooler, um, the dissolved oxygen in water, remember they are aquatic insects, so they're breathing um, the oxygen dissolved in water. It is um, more so they can supply the, the larvae that are growing in water, um, so they're pretty happy, they can grow big. But when it gets warmer, the dissolved oxygen will decrease in water, and the mayflies actually, the larvae actually need more oxygen con to consume when it's warmer. So there will be a mismatch between the oxygen that is supplying them and the oxygen that they actually need to breathe in. And therefore, oxygen is restricting their body size. Now, this will sound pretty reasonable. However, most of the experiments done to test this hypothesis rear the insects all the way up to a temperature where, where they cannot no longer live anymore. And this is called the acuthermal limits. Now, this temperature can go up as high to the um, 40 degrees Celsius, which doesn't really represent what is happening in their natural habitat. And from our rearing experiments, we already know that the temperature for this mayfly it is around 30 degrees. So to test the hypothesis, we measure the oxygen that they're consuming throughout um, by pushing them from a temperature that they're pretty happy all the way till they die. Um, and we found out that, yes, they are consuming more oxygen as temperature increases. However, at 30, um, when we push them beyond their ecological thermal limit temperature, which is 30 degrees, they are still consuming more oxygen. So this is telling us that the oxygen isn't really limiting um, these mayflies. We also took a molecular approach um, to study gene expressions. And what we did, what we're asking is whether um, the mayfly sites are being restricted by temperature because of oxygen. So what we did was we took the oxygen away from these mayflies, and then we found that two of the genes were actually responding to lack of oxygen, which are the ones in purple. Um, and, then temp and then genes that are related to temperature response wasn't really being activate when um, we took the oxygen away. So the next experiment we did was we reared these mayfly larvae up from a good temperature to all the way to 34, and then look at the same genes that were responding to oxygen deficiency. And what we found was that mostly the genes aren't really responsive. So this in the oxygen consumption data is basically not supporting the oxygen limitation hypothesis. So there is also another um, hypothesis out there which is saying that it is, because, it is because the energy distribution that is limiting their body size. So if we think of energy as money, and unfortunately in this case you actually have to pay to breathe, and a temperature that they're pretty happy, they only need to pay a couple bucks for breathing, and so they will have a lot more to spend on growing and producing eggs. So in this case, they can grow bigger and then they can make a lot of eggs. But when temperature goes, gets warmer, now you have to actually pay for more money just to breathe. You will have less money left for growing up and making eggs. So they're resulting in smaller body size and less eggs. So to test this hypothesis, what we did was we looked at the metabolites um, between the heat treated and non-heat treated larvae and we asked the question whether the, uh, whether the concentration of some of the metabolites will be different. And what we found was metabolites that were related to sugar were decreased when they were treated with um, warmer temperature. We also found that the metabolites that are related to cell membrane maintenance were different. So this is telling us that when temperature is warm, um, the mayflies are spending more energy, so they're, they're using a lot of sugar um, for energy metabolism. And somehow they have um, protection mechanisms to prevent damage from, um, caused by the sun. 
So this data itself, and along with the gene expression and oxygen consumption data, is more driving the direction towards the energy distribution hypothesis. So why is studying the fundamentals so important? Not only because mayflies are indicators of freshwater um, environment, but also because if we have a better understanding of the physiology of these mayflies, it would be able to help us diagnose um, environmental problems better. So say if one day we can no longer find a species um, out in the stream, if we know how they're functioning, we may be able to tell that was it because of temperature or was it because of water pollution like heavy metals that was causing them to disappear. So if we take a step back and look at the bigger picture, what we can do and what we should be doing is to try to support and maintain a good environment where a lot of species can live in. Thank you.